Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day. This is the highest holy day of the Christian year. This is the day we proclaim the joyful mystery of God's love for us, the sure and certain promise of resurrection to eternal life, made sure for us by the resurrection of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. Seventy-eight years ago today, just weeks before the end of World War II, in a prison camp, in Flossenburg, Germany. A man named Dietrich Bonhoeffer trusted in this promise of God as he was led to his death, a price he paid for following Jesus Christ and for resisting evil. As he ascended to the gallows, he said, this is the end, for me, the beginning of life. In a place of death, he found life. The end of his physical life and the beginning of his eternal and abundant life, trusting in God's promises. Dietrich knew this promise of resurrection, and deep down in his soul, he believed. Because he knew that if Jesus Christ is not written, risen, then nothing else matters. And because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead as we proclaim today on this joyful day, nothing else matters. <clears throat> Welcome to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to members and friends of the congregation, those who are passing through town, those who are here for the first time, for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, and for those who are joining us online. We would love for you, if you are able, to join us again next week as we continue this celebration of the resurrection for the next 50 days in the Easter season. No matter who you are, we would ask you to look to the black paper pad at the side of your aisle and register your attendance here. Also, if you are a first time or new visitor and you would like to have a free subscription to our lovely weekly newsletter and our monthly newsletter, or if you have any pastoral care needs, any questions or anything else that this congregation might help you with, please sign the connection card and you may put it in the offering plate as it is passed. Today is a day to praise God out loud with all that we've got, to sing our alleluias out loud, joining our voices with the voices of the angels and the archangels, and dancing. Yes, dancing, the way King David did before the Ark of the Covenant freely and joyfully. We see joy in each other's faces and we taste God in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lutheran Christians believe and confess that Jesus Christ is truly present in, with, and under the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. We come to this table not because we are worthy, but precisely because we are unworthy and because God invites us. If you have faith to believe that these gifts of bread and wine are given for you, for you, for the forgiveness of sin, you are welcome at God's table, and we will provide further instruction before the sacrament. Mini Messy Church is our reception today. We invite you following worship to join us in the hospitality room for coffee and refreshments, and then to continue your pilgrimage a few steps further to the Thomas Chapel, where there will be activities, games, photo ops, I understand, uh, and even perhaps a free raffle. So join us after church for this mini messy church.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Colossians, the third chapter. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The congregation will sing in unison with the choir.
St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Kraboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But I go to my brother, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We invite forward the children, those who used to be children, those who wish they were still children, those who are glad that they're not still children, anyone who's already had a little bit of sugar this morning, jelly beans, peeps, and anyone who feels within them the urge to dance before the ark of the Lord as David did in a way that maybe makes them feel like they're making a holy fool of themselves. <laughs> Last week at Messy Church, some of the children who were here learned to dance. And to the adults who were there and trying to enjoy their coffee, I said, um, Adults are allowed to dance too, and that is not a question. <laughs> so if you are moved to join our procession of dance today, you are welcome, welcome to join us. Today is a day for song and dance. Today, children, is a day for s not sadness, but for happiness. When you're sad, it's hard to really have the energy to do anything, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if your grown-ups have ever bought you a gift and hidden it away while you were waiting for a birthday or Christmas. Did you ever sneak into a closet and look and see that there might be a present there for you, but you couldn't open it yet? Maybe. Maybe. Well, about 40 days ago, 
we took a gift of the church, a word called hallelujah, and we wrapped it up and we put it away and we didn't, we didn't say hallelujah except for maybe one or two slips of the tongue during 40 days of Lent. Because hallelujah means something special. Does anybody remember what hallelujah means? Can you say that louder? Praise the Lord. And today is the day of all days in the church where we take that hallelujah out of the closet and we unwrap it and God gives that gift of praise to God back to us. Now last week, Bobby taught a song that had that word in it. It had hallelujah in it. And people used their voices and they used their wiggly bodies, and they used percussion instruments to sing that song. So Bobby is gonna teach it to you today. And then Annabelle taught the people who were present how to dance with joy before the Lord. So with that, I'm going to stand back and let Bobby and Annabelle do their thing. When we sing, you can grab
who have gone before us from generation to generation, over the millennia, all the way back to the day of the resurrection. We proclaim the risen Lord, we sing and we dance our hallelujahs. But this is not what Mary said. Two days after Jesus had been tortured and executed and laid in a garden tomb, there was no joy for her as she made her way in the darkness to the sepulcher to be near the earthly remains of Jesus, her rabbi, for a hope of some minuscule consolation to at least honor his body. That was a cold comfort to her. As she arrived at the burial cave, she saw that the stone had been rolled away. We proclaim the rolling away of the stone as a sign of triumph. But for Mary, it simply multi multiplied her grief as she concluded that the grave had been desecrated and that someone or some ones were depraved enough to steal the corpse of her master. To Peter and to the other disciples, she sputtered through tears that they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. To the angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been laid, she lamented, they have taken away the Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. And to Jesus himself, risen but not recognized, she implored, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. For the first 15 verses of today's gospel, grief and misunderstanding reign, Mary does not yet see. Seeing and beholding and then understanding and believing and following, these are all powerful themes in the account of the good news of Jesus Christ according to John the Evangelist. Seeing runs through this gospel from beginning to end, beginning in chapter one, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us and we have seen his glory. From John chapter four, the Samaritan woman at the well runs to tell all her neighbors, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. And from chapter 6, after feeding 5,000 and more with a miraculous multiplication of bread, Jesus said to them, This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. In chapter 9, after Jesus gives sight to a man born blind, the man replies to his interrogators, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. The risen Lord was standing right next to Mary outside that empty tomb. She saw him and at the same time she did not see him. Is it possible to both see and to not see? at the same time. And then he called her by name, Mary. At the sound of his voice, her eyes opened in a new way and she saw the Lord. She saw him. And even as John's gospel begins with an invitation to come and see it concludes here with a mandate, go and tell. 2,000 years removed from the event, we proclaim the resurrection that Christ is risen indeed. And because of Mary's witness, we who have come to faith by the power of the Holy Spirit can proclaim with her something even greater, something personal. We proclaim with the whole church of every time and every place that Christ is risen. And on hearing Mary's gospel, we too can each proclaim, I have seen the Lord. 
Where do we see Jesus? There are so many ways. We see Jesus in the perplexed faces of the ones who quite can't yet accept that forgiveness and reconciliation is for them too. We see him in the laughing faces and the bemused bewilderment of those who joined in our dance today and those who will join us at Messy Church after worship. We see him in the faces of our neighbors who receive and our neighbors who serve in the Food Fellowship Program and in all the other ministries of this congregation. We see him in the face of the pregnant woman in ragged sandals seeking life and refuge across international borders. We see him in the face of those who have been lied to, the ones who have been told that God cannot love them because of who they are, who they love, what they have done, or what they have left undone. We see him in the face of Dietrich Bonhoeffer and in the faces of all who speak truth to power, knowing it may cost them their lives. And we see him in the still faces of tens of thousands of those who today lie on their deathbeds, contemplating with faith the next big surprise. We see him even in the faces of the dead, because even death is no stranger to our God. For our sake, Jesus endured death, and Jesus conquered death. Because death no longer has any hold on him, death no longer has any hold on you. Because Jesus rose, firstborn from among the dead, we too have the promise of the resurrection to abundant and eternal life, which has already begun in us. And beloveds, know this too, that when you look in the mirror, you see Jesus also, because Jesus dwells in you. It is in him that you live, you move, you have your being. With all honesty and sincerity, some of you may wonder whether you are really seeing Jesus in some of the ways that I just shared. After all, you're not seeing him the same way that Mary did, but you are seeing him. Return next week and the story will continue. You'll hear the story of Thomas who refused to believe that Jesus is risen until he had seen with his own eyes. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and who have yet come to believe. All of us who have come to believe begun our journey when someone said to us, come and see. And now, today, dearly beloved of God, Jesus calls you by name and gives you that same mandate that he gave to Mary Magdalene, the first eyewitness to the resurrection, the first preacher of good news, and the apostle to the apostles. As you have come and seen, now go and tell. Tell that Christ is risen and tell that we have seen the Lord. I leave you now, dear friends in Christ, with the words of a preacher far greater than I, glorious words of St. John Chrysostom, preached one Easter Sunday about 1,600 years ago. Enter all of you into the joy of our Lord, whether first or last. O oh, rich and poor together, one with another, dance for joy. The table is rich laden, Feast royally, all of you. 
Let no one mourn their transgressions, for pardon has dawned from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the Savior's death has set us free. He that was taken by death has annihilated it. He descended into Hades and took Hades captive. He embittered it when it tasted his flesh. It was embittered, for it was abolished. It was embittered for it was mocked. It was embittered for it was purged. It was embittered for it was despoiled. It was embittered for it was bound in chains. It took a body and came upon God. It took earth and came upon heaven. It took what it saw, but it crumbled before what it had not seen. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, Hades, where is thy victory? Christ is risen and you are overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life reigns. Christ is risen and not one dead remains in a tomb. For Christ, being raised from the dead, has become the first fruits of them that have slept. To him be glory and might unto the ages of ages. Amen.
We confess our faith in the triune God. We believe in the one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. In particular, we bring before you all the people here at Emmanuel who live out their vocations day by day. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises, and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and fields. Keep us mindful of the labor of workers who tend to them. Feed us and all your children, wherever they may live, with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world, that all experience the peace that only you can give. Give leaders of all nations wisdom, courage, and compassion. Be with your children who bear the burden of war. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his, examples in our, by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized and for all of those who mourn those who are sad and lonely, those living in poverty, and those who bear their burdens hidden from the world. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly's song. Encourage everyone to sing their own songs of thanksgiving in whatever way they are able to do so. Risen Lord, Hear our prayer. as you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. 
with your holy ones who have sung your praise and shown us your glory through the arts, especially Albrecht Dürer, Lucas Cranach, and Matthias Grunewald. Free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, Offering plates will be passed throughout the congregation, and mindful that COVID is still among us, I advise you that in the back of the seat in front of you, there are some packets of hand sanitizer you may decide to use after you pass the plate, if you wish. Now is the time to become priests to one another, sharing the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share with one another a socially safe sign of God's child.
generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth in the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we understand it as Lutheran Christians as the feast of the baptized. If the Holy Spirit is leading you to receive these gifts from God today, you are welcome at God's table. There will be several options for receiving communion. Some have picked up elements from the narthex and will be communing in their seats. Those of you who are worshiping online, now would be a time to pause the video and make sure that your elements are also prepared. If you come forward to receive the elements, know that there are gluten-free options available. There is wine, which is the dark colored liquid, and juice, which is the light colored liquid. To receive the bread, cross your hands the one over the other. To receive the wine, simply take an individual cup and dispose of your cup in the receptacles on either side. There will be two stations for communion today. Those who are not communing are also invited forward for a blessing if you wish. And you can indicate that by crossing your arms over your chest as you approach the minister. I invite you now to please rise. Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin, be reformed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Those who are communing from your seats and those who are joining us online, this is the time to receive your elements. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now I invite you to come forward as the ushers direct you.
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.